Hi, welcome back. Uh, right now we're gonna go through how to attach a row. So as you can see, I've actually got um, a full five rows of my quilt put together and I'm getting ready to put the last row on. And rows two through six are all gonna go on the same way. So this is the easy part. Uh, we're going to start right here. So this is where I came across um, in my diagram. Uh, if you remember, we had all of these, all of this done. Um, so when you added the next row across, you're going to add it straight across the top here. And then if you look at the diagram, you're just going to kind of snake up and around and up and around. And it's going to be just like when you attached uh, row one, where you're going to work up and down the sides of the blocks. And that's going to be how you connect them. But for now, what we're doing is we're getting the bottoms connected. So this is the left side of my quilt. And this is the block we're gonna work in. You can see my hook right here is in the corner with a single crochet holding that thread there. So you're gonna take at this point and actually, let's give myself a nice loop there so I don't lose my stitches. And you're gonna flip it over and you're going to be working left to right still. Make sure you have the quilt nice and comfortable um, and you'll be able to attach your blocks pretty easily at this point, because all we're doing is the same stitch. Now, if you remember what we said before, pattern B is the pattern that we use when we're joining two blocks. So this is the top of row five, and now we're getting ready to attach row six to the top of that. So we are going to be working pattern B all the way across the top, because that is going to be what we use to attach the two blocks. So we're going to do just like we did before with um, the first row. We're going to take our new block and we're going to line it up back sides together, wrong sides together to the back of um, this block here. And if you remember, I said with the chain two that on the bottom row, we used it in between each block because each block was new. Now we're only attaching with a chain two at the start of this row. And I'll show you why, because we work straight across. So for the very first block that you attach for the next row, you will chain two, but instead of working sideways, we are now working into the bottom of it, but it's the same process. So we're going to, oops, sorry, chain two, and then we're gonna single crochet right into that first one. And now you can see, let me shift this up so I can show you, block one, uh, block one of row six is now attached to the top of block five. And we're gonna continue right across. And I do apologize, this is gonna go just a smidge long, but I just wanna show you um, how easy this is and show you where it joins. So we have done it, we single do our um, chain one, and then we're going to work right into the loops from the top of block row five, just like we did before. Do your chain one, you hop across, and it's that same back and forth pattern. That's why I said once you do it in the first row, you'll really get the hang of it. Because you're just hopping back and forth between the two, always skipping the one block, or the one stitch, sorry, just to make sure you're keeping it even. And that's really all it is. There's no fancy stitches. Uh, it's just a matter of keeping your count and um, anyone can really do this. I, you know, I used very, the very basic stitches, even once we get into the outer border. It's a beautiful scallop border, but it's all simple stitches. So we're gonna keep working all the way across and we are getting there. We just keep working in the next chain down. You can see how it's you know just the same pattern over and over again. So as we're getting down to the end, what I'm going to show you is how we are going to work across that, um, I'm going to call it the neutral space between 
the blocks so that you can continue that lacy pattern right into the next one. Um, hang on a second. Apologize, I'm working in a bit of a confined space. My quilt is trying to slide on me. Love this project because this is such an easy project to um, take with you wherever you go. Uh, you can sit in the car, whatever you're doing, you can just work away at it. Uh, so let's see, right, here's our next one. We're almost down there. So this is going to be, when we reach the corners, what we're doing is we're going to keep leapfrogging back and forth, but we're also setting ourselves up to have that chain three in the middle. I apologize, one of my um, stitches is there. Didn't get all of my threads trimmed after I uh, wove them in. One of the things I love about this quilt too is that you can weave right over, stitch right over all of your ends. I hate weaving in ends, so anything that allows me to just stitch them down instead of having to sit with a needle and weave them in is always gonna be high on my list of fun projects. Okay, so we're at the corner, you can see here. So we're gonna do a single crochet, chain one, and I'm gonna turn this over so that I can really show you what I'm doing. So now what we're gonna do is we need to single crochet in this space, but we need to get from here into putting our next block in, which is here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, let's see, I'm gonna single crochet here in this space and try not to get your thread all tangled up. And then we're gonna chain three. So you're gonna do one, two, three, and we're gonna use that to create the next loop. So here is the corner stitch. You can see here the corner chain three that we were working into before. We're gonna do a single crochet in that stitch again. And then chain one, and here's where we're gonna attach the next block. So I'm gonna grab, here's a block. I'm gonna grab this. And just like before, um, we're going to just single crochet right into the corner, chain one, and then just keep going right across into the top of the next block in the row. So we would skip one and do one. And give me just one moment and I will turn this over and show you what this is gonna look like. Okay, so. Now you can see here, so what we did was we crocheted across, we worked into the top of this loop, and we created, by doing it this way and doing that chain three, what we did was we created another loop. So when we come back around, we'll, we'll finish block B all the way across. And these are just gonna hang loose. So you'll have six flop being, you know, squares attached. Then when we get done, we come back around, and this is where we do the, zig the snaking up and down, just like we did with um, that first row to connect the tops and the sides and um, have it ready to go for the attaching the final, well, this is the final row for me, but that's what you would do to attach the next rows. Once you get all done, as you can see, the top will be done. The side on the right is done because we were working around and, and snaking back and forth. When you get all done, you're gonna end up back finishing at the top corner. Normally, we would chain two and add another block, but this is it, we're done. So all we're gonna do here is work pattern A again, down the side and then across the bottom, and you will end up right back where we started at the very beginning with that nice pattern A going around all four sides on the outside. And then you'll be ready right there to work your outer border. And the outer border is gonna be a simple single crochet all the way around the quilt, working in the, um, let me show you right here. So you'll work a single crochet in the single crochet space, 
and then you'll work a single crochet in the chain three, a single crochet in the top of the single crochet, and you'll do that all the way around the quilt. And once you've got that done, then um, you'll do your final lap with the outer border and you'll be done with your quilt. Okay, and the one last thing that I wanted to show you was how to connect the corner sections here when you're doing um, coming back around the sides. So in the last section, we talked about going across the bottom and attaching each one of these. I have now got my entire last row attached and I've woven in and um, snaked in and around um, each block to get to the point. And I'm at this point and the very last block. So I just wanted to take a moment to show you this corner. And what you're gonna do is, if you remember when we were coming across, we, um, we did a single crochet in this corner, chained one, single crocheted back in this corner. We took a um, chain one and single crocheted in this center spot right here. And then we chained three and chain uh, single crocheted in the next um, corner space. And the, I'm gonna show you now why we did that and why that's important. So we've worked all the way back around. I've done pattern A down this side. I'm getting ready to shift into pattern B to connect the center and then this side of my block to this side of my block. So right now I'm at the last section. I've got chain three on my hook and I'm going to just do a single crochet back in this corner of my block. So now I'm gonna switch into pattern B mode and chain one. And then I'm going to chain one in the top of that chain three space that we created, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna single crochet in the top of that chain space, chain at three space that we created when we went across the bottoms here, attaching the bottoms of these blocks. Then I'm going to jump right back over and crochet a single crochet right in the bottom corner of this block. Oops. And once, I apologize. So the easiest thing to do, and I'm gonna go ahead and take a second and do this real fast, is as you're shifting around the sides, take a moment to adjust your project so that it's facing you. It makes it much easier to work with. So as you can see, we're back. We've got the um, single crochet in the chain one in the center space here. And then we were gonna single crochet right here in the corner, chain one. And we're right back at this point into, sorry, let me shift the bulk. We're right back into doing the single crochet in the top of the chain three space across, chain one, skip a space, and single crochet, chain one, skip over to the other side, single crochet in the top, chain one, and then skip one and single crochet in the side again. Can't get it to go through, there we go, chain one, okay. So now we've done that, let me just show you. My corner's connected. As you can see, that lace, lacy pattern has been maintained throughout the whole section of the um, corner here. And we'll just continue to work the pattern B down until we get to the end here. And once we reach that point, we'll switch over to pattern A. We'll work pattern A across the top and then this is where we will chain three in that corner space and do another single crochet there and then switch over to um, stay in pattern A actually. And we will run pattern A all the way down the side and then all the way across the bottom and single crochet, uh, slip stitch into the first single crochet of um, this whole pattern. Um, and it'll connect perfectly. So once you've done that, you are at the um, end of this part of the process. All that's left to do is um, your two rounds of the border. The first round is the um, single crochets. I would recommend if you get to the bottom and you've slip stitched into your first single crochet stitch, if your thread is very low or you're about out, um, go ahead and switch over to a new spool right at that corner. It's a perfect starting and stopping point because the um, next skein of yarn that you have will carry you through the rest of the project. And hopefully that will cover all the bases for this pattern. If you have any um, questions or comments, feel free to leave them on my website or in, send me an email. Um, otherwise, I hope you have as much fun with this project as I did. And keep an, um, an eye on the website for future patterns as they are released.